However, if you want to, you can uh, just go ahead and X out of these. Uh, you can just do all your baking within Substance Painter. So we're going to go in here to Bake Mesh Maps, and we're going to say we want to output this. Let's say we're going to bake it at, and you can change this per texture set. Let's say 4096. We're going to start with a skull. We're going to go here to load in the high res, and if you didn't see that, this little button right here, I'm going to click that. We're going to go Ape Skull High under the high poly parameters. If you didn't really have a high res and you just wanted to use your low res, you can just check this little box on. Here's all the settings you can change. Under match, we're going to say by mesh name when we have normal selected. So with normal selected, we want to say, you know what, while we're baking our normal, go ahead and match by mesh name. Uh, world space normal, uh, ambient occlusion here, you can tell it, I only want to bake to my ambient occlusion uh, by mesh name, so it's going to bake like that my normal map. Or I can say, you know what, ignore that, ignore names, and just go ahead and bake my ambient occlusion. And down here, it's going to say bake skull mesh, bake skull mat mesh maps, or bake all texture sets. So if you have all of your high res loaded in, uh, you can go ahead and bake them all at the same time. I'm going to go ahead and just say bake skull mat mat mesh maps. And this is another one here where it's going to kind of max out one of my cores here. And I, you know, this is where the boost clock comes in. If it's only going to use up one of my cores, it can go ahead and boost and keep it cool enough. So again, not really optimized for distributed workloads in this particular case. Oh, and one thing I should have mentioned, the mat ID, I think by default is set to the vertex color, which is what we want. Uh, now that we're baking our ambient occlusion, you're going to see uh, the GPU kick in. And that's going to bake really quickly. So you saw that kind of spike right there. And there we go. There's all our mat. maps baked here. So we're going to hit OK. If you want to see these individually, you can go up here. And you can choose like a single color. So if we go down here to our mesh maps and we choose our normal, here's our normal bake. You can also hit C to cycle through these. And I was playing around in Substance Painter and one thing I want to clarify is when you hit C, you're cycling through your single channels and then Shift B is a cycle through your mesh map. So if you do Shift B, then you can go through your AO and your material ID and stuff like that. And then C is to cycle through your channels as you're painting on them, like your roughness and your normal and uh, stuff like that and then M to go back to material. Uh, but usually that's when you're painting your material, so your roughness, normal height, and stuff like that. Uh, for your mesh maps, you can go in here and let's check out our ambient occlusion. Pretty clean bake. And if you need to change any of the settings over here, just go over here to bake mesh maps again. And you don't have to bake everything. If you just have a problem with one, if you want to change um, back here under the material ID, there's the vertex color. So we are baking our vertex color. I'll show you that in just a second. But if you wanted to change just something in the, uh, the AO, like say you wanted to you know, turn off ignore backface, then we can go through here. We'll turn uncheck all of these and then we'll say bake skull mesh maps. And we're just going to rebake the ambient occlusion with those new settings. And it's, again, it's going to go really super quick. And then we'll hit M as in Michael and we'll go back to um, the entire thing. So that went ahead and again baked our normal map, ambient occlusion, curvature map, all that good stuff. And our material ID map. Uh, if we go over here to our textures, uh, these are our bake map textures. I can just uh, go to layer here and we'll put in a new fill layer, this little bucket icon right here. And for this uh, base color, I'm just going to drag and drop our color map on that base color. And you're going to see um, there's our vertex color map. And this is going to come in handy. It looks like there's a small problem over here. And let's, you know what, I might have, I might have filled that in, I'm not quite sure. Um, but one thing uh, that comes in handy is, let's say this fill layer right here, I'm going to go over here to our materials. You know what, let's do another fill layer. I'm going to drop this to the bottom. Uh, this fill layer here, I'm just going to touch this brass, and now we have a brass monkey. And we can take this fill layer, we can right-click it, and we can do... I'm sorry, this is an ape, not a monkey. And you can go to Add Mask with Color Selection, and then very easily you can go in here and you can pick a color. It's like, I just wanted this part to be brass, and it'll go ahead and mask that out from you from your vertex color paint. So very, very easy uh, material drag-and-drop selection. Now, to go ahead and bake all of our other stuff, we can go in our Texture Set Settings, Let's go into Teeth, Bake Mesh Maps, go ahead and exit out of there, and then we'll go in here to the Teeth High. Go ahead and turn these back on, and I like to have all of these turned back on. Thickness may or may not be useful depending on if you're doing like hard surface stuff, if you want to use it for subsurface scattering and stuff like that, um, you can leave that on or off. But most of these things come in handy when you're texturing. You can use these maps to dictate where like rust would go or where dirt would collect and stuff like that. So really useful stuff or where scratches end up on, on metal on the edges and stuff like that. So uh, we can say bake teeth mesh maps. We have teeth selected. We have a teeth high res loaded. And just like we talked about with hardware performance, this is where 
the RTX ray tracing is going to kick in on the world space. Uh, Mad ID isn't going to be, but AO, curvature position, and thickness should all be uh, wicked fast uh, if you have an RTX uh, GPU that will go ahead and enhance those uh, baking features there. There we go. And the iris, again, we're not going to bake anything for the iris. We're going to use that as, as is. I'm going to need the eyes here. And the eyes probably don't need to be a 4096. In fact, the teeth didn't either. I can drop this down to 2048 and bake our eyes. In fact, let's go back to the teeth here. And we'll go ahead and rebake those teeth. There we go. So we're all set. I'll go back, uh, hold down Control, Alt, right click, grab that skull here, and we'll go ahead and uh, delete these fill layers out of here. So there we go. We're all baked up. Now, all of our stacked stuff and all of our duplicated stuff, you're going to see all this stuff I want to have over on the other side. Uh, the teeth I want to have over on the other side as well. So we can go ahead and do that. So let's go back to our Maya file here. Go ahead and drop these back into our low here. So if I go through here and I turn on all of these things that we had duplicated, they're all right there. Now, if I made any changes whatsoever to these while I was baking, uh, these are no longer going to line up. So to play it safe, I'm going to delete all of those. And I'm going to go through here manually. I'm going to select, you know what, I'm going to select everything. I'm going to control select the jaw and the head because I know I don't want those mirrored. Everything else I do want mirrored. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to say delete with type history, freeze transformations, reset transformations. I'm going to duplicate these off. I'm going to do a scale negative one and X, and now that we have a negative one scale, I'm going to go over here to freeze transformations. It's going to get rid of that. All my normals look fine. So now what I can do is I can select all of these, and since I'm not baking anymore, I can go ahead and leave them in the group. I don't, I don't care that much. We can go over here to file, export selection, and we'll just call this ape skull all. Now the cool thing about Substance Painter is I can go back in here and I can go to file, I'm sorry, edit project configuration, and I can just bring in a new uh, low FBX. So I can go in here to select, I could say Ape Skull All, hit OK, and now I've got all of those extra pieces uh, loaded in here just fine. And if I start painting on this one, it'll go over here automatically because the UVs are sitting right on top of each other. So before we lose anything, let's go up here to File, Save As, and I'll just go ahead and throw this in a painter folder and go ahead and name it and save it.